<laughs> Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. All right, man, I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. So um, this is the last pairing that I haven't covered up to this point. So I'm, str I'm trying to stay on top of things for you guys, man. Uh, you know, get everything across the board. So this is Jan Stristoff Duda versus Arjun Arigasi. Uh, and so for all my people coming from the Philippines, as always, I will say Mermink Salamat. Anybody who is coming up from Poland, I will say Jen Koya. Anybody who is coming from India, um, I will say Dani Yavadalo. Uh, and this is game number 13 uh, in the Blitz section uh, between these two. So, uh, man, if you guys are ready to go, let's take a look see what we got for this game, son. So we got the move E4. We do see E6, French defense. We got D4, and then we do have D5. And, I mean, you have, it's kind of like a big branching point we have at this point. Uh, you can play the advance. Uh, you can play the exchange. Not that exchange. Come on, bro. Get my arrows right, man. I, I think I need to take a class with a Karo, man, so he can show me how to do these arrows right. Uh, you got the classical. You got the Tarash variation. Kind of however you want to play, homie. Uh, we do see uh, E5, which is the advanced variation. So basically, white is going to be trying to establish this type of pawn chain uh, in black by way of this. And this is going to be trying to chip away at that. Right now, currently, white has a lot of space, so black needs to try to get, uh, you know, free some space uh, because they are a little bit cramped. So we do see C5, like I was saying a second ago. We got C3 establishing that nice pawn chain. We got knight to C6, uh, and this is attacking uh, the points uh, for uh, white. We got knight to F3 just defending those points, and then we do see bishop to D7, and this is the Yuva variation. Uh, we got bishop to e2, so we kind of have like a little subtle bishop movements going on. In this situation, it's not the absolute worst if you want to go bishop to d3, uh, you know, blocking uh, this pawn since it's not hit so hard uh, at first. Uh, but black can definitely gang up on that pawn at some point later on. We got knight going uh, knight g to e7. Uh, we have two main ideas uh, when we are looking at this move, knight to g6 and knight to f4. Like I said, white uh, is looking to try to solidify this chain right here. Black is trying to, uh, you know, chip away at it. Uh, one of the major focal points, uh, two of the major focal points for black is going to be d4 and e5. If you can undermine uh, this pawn, uh, you know, you can attack it. If you can undermine this pawn, you can actually start attacking e5. So it's all uh, a very big plan. We got castles by white. Knight goes to g6. Like I said, on a good day, black can kind of chip away or maybe isolate a pawn on e5. And then you have these knights along with possible queen to c7 hitting that point very, very hard. We got the move g3. We got f6. Like I said, breaking that down. We do see pawn uh, taking f6. Uh, and we do see a uh, queen uh, taking f6 and like i was telling you guys before let's say for example white makes like a lazy move uh you got pawn takes pawn takes uh and you see that black has now just isolated uh the e pawn uh from white uh and this is absolutely some of the ideas that you are going to have uh from the black side uh but like i said we do see these movements here we got bishop going to g5 uh and very interestingly enough uh, we have the king and the queen kind of dancing around with each other right here. Like, that's not <laughs> that's not the square that you see the queen going to every day. We do see bishop going down to e3. We got pawn taking, pawn taking. Uh, we got bishop going to d6. We got knight to c3. We got castles by black. And then we do see the move knight to g5. It doesn't always mean this, but generally when you do have a chance of making a move that attacks or hits the opponent's queen, you can usually buy yourself a free move, uh, especially if you put that piece on a defended square. So you do see uh, Duda making knight to g5 and then the queen moves and then we do see f4 and we are just definitely clamping down on this square right here. Maybe on a good day we could play an f5, kind of rip things open. Uh, just like how black has the ideas of undermining d4 for the sake of trying to get into e5, uh, if you can undermine this pawn right here, it does make d5 kind of weak. So it's kind of all the positional type of play that you see going on. We do see knight g to e7, and we got knight c to e4. Bro. <laughs> Mind blown, bro. Like, wait a minute. Why would you just put your knight right there, and it's an attack square, right? It's like, bro, I'm just going to lose my knight, right? Well... One of the major things that you see in a position uh, is that uh, the queen is hit and also this bishop is hit and there is no way for uh, this black queen to defend uh, this bishop because the knight has taken uh, the only square away from the queen. Uh, so this is very, very good. Uh, knight c to e4 is the novelty of the game too. 
very like legitimate ideas behind it. Like I said, pawn takes, we got knight taking, and the queen has to kind of find somewhere to go. So we do see queen to h6, knight does take a d6. Now, something I wanted to show you guys before though, that this idea is actually possible even as far back as here. Uh, in this position, you actually have knight g to e4 here, taking advantage of uh, that uh, possibility. After pawn takes, you got knight taking, a uh, queen going back, but then you do see bishop going back to g5. And then you see it's the same idea. You just kind of have to calculate a little bit more. Uh, the queen is going to have to find kind of somewhere to go. Uh, you know, you probably are going to see knight going to f6, uh, but that is going to be dropping the exchange. So you kind of gave a little bit of material to get the exchange. So, like, obviously, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but like I said, we did not see that. This is just a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit more human to kind of play this way. The other one is like computer, like stockfish, like, bro, come on, bro. We got knight going down to d5, hitting that undefended bishop on e3. We get a bishop dropping back to f2. Knight c to e7. We got rook to c1. Put it on an open file, homie. We got bishop going to c6, bishop to f3. We got rook A going to D8, the knight coming down to C4, and it might just kind of look like the knight ran away, uh, but we are definitely very much eyeing this E5 square, uh, and then we can hit this bishop, trade knight for bishop, uh, and then we will just have two bishops versus two knights uh, with the open position that is actually going into a nice end game. But we do see knight to G6 just defending the E5 square, knight going down to E3, knight D uh, takes F4. Bro, what's up with all these sacrifices, homie? <laughs> what is cracking? So looking at the situation, you're like, wait a minute. Is that even a move? It actually is a move. Knight taking E3 is the absolute best move in the position. Uh, but you definitely do have some ideas uh, surrounding knight takes, pawn takes, and then knight takes. Uh, and one of the things you do need to notice um, is that you are kind of open on this file right here. But you definitely have a way to defend. And we do see Duda do that very well. We got bishop taking c6, pawn taking c6, uh, and then we do see bishop to g3, uh, just plugging up this file right here. So, I mean, the bishop is kind of acting like a pawn right here, homie. We do see rook taking d4, and this was the guess the move portion uh, of the video, uh, and I like went past it, so uh, <laughs> there will be no guess the move in this video. Uh, what I kind of wanted people to guess um, is definitely the absolute best move uh, for black in this position. Uh, if you are on the black side and you do notice uh, that you do have a check here um, and you have this rook taking this pawn right here, if you can take this right here, uh, you would be looking at a very, very winning uh, position if you do get the queen to take here and you would be looking at knight to e2 a check. And that is what we like to call a family fork. Bro, this... Yes, we do. We are uh, doing good. You are getting your material back. Uh, you are getting uh, the queen uh, and you are just up a nice amount of pawns. Uh, so that would be definitely very uh, nice uh, for, uh, you know, white to be doing. Uh, but yes, um, I did forget that. So I kind of went a little bit ahead. Uh, but we did see a rook taking a d4. So that would have been like a really nice move. If you kind of saw what I was talking about. Uh, you absolutely do not want to take this at all. So we do see Duda sidestepping the queen to c2. We got the move e5, uh, but this is an absolute blunder um, because it does uh, unprotect a very, very uh, important square. Uh, and Duda does recognize this. So he plays the move knight to f5. And we have a family fork, but it is just not with a check. We got uh, the knight hitting this queen over here, and we got the knight hitting uh, this rook over here. And the unfortunate thing is you absolutely cannot do this to protect this knight. So you will be dropping uh, this uh, rook, uh, and the pawn will have to take, uh, and you do have a lot of pressure on this piece right here. So in light of all of that, um, it is in this position that Arjun resigns the game. So, I mean, it was a nice little miniature game. I wish I had the way that they kind of redid chess.com with, uh, you know, when you look at the analysis board, they used to have uh, the, um, you know, moves kind of running like this. And you can see all the moves like in one like shot on the screen. But they do it now where it's like columned. So sometimes you don't kind of catch things. So it's unfortunate that they started doing that. I wish they kind of change it back. Uh, but that is that right there. Uh, all of my people in the Philippines, um, I will say, Matter of Salamat the King Makai being on post on Noon World Inga King Ma video. Um, Mabuding Pak Badi to you, Inga Lagi. 
Um, Masaya Kong Makiti Kang Muli, I appreciate very much seeing you guys again. Um, anybody who is coming from Poland, um, I will say chased uh, and Jen Koya again for stopping by. I appreciate you guys very much. Anybody who is coming from India, um, I will say Namaskaram uh, and Dani Avadalu if you're coming from Telangana. Uh, and um, what else do I want to say, bro? Um, there was something else I was going to mention real quick. I don't know. <laughs> I forget, man. I'm human, bro. Forgive me. Uh, I know all my real people watch the video to this point, uh, so I can kind of be myself a little bit. I'm washing my bed sheets back here, so I still need my comforter spot, as you guys can probably see. But I'm going to be sleeping nice and crisp tonight. So I appreciate everybody very much for stopping by, and I'm going to see you guys next time.